Today we're going to talk about centralized payments. Centralized payments allows you to collect payments in one legal entity on behalf of one or many legal entities. In addition, you can settle invoices and payments in a single legal entity across multiple legal entities. Before you can use centralized payments, you must do some basic setup. The first setup is in the organizational area. Open organization administration, organization hierarchies, here you will create an organizational hierarchy that represents the companies that belong in your centralized payments boundaries. We have one already set up here. It's called centralized payments, although it can be any name that you want to set up. Notice that when we view the centralized payment hierarchy, it has a list of three companies. CEE is the main company, and then two subsidiaries, CEU and CEII. This means that you can collect on behalf of CEU and CEI, or any combination of the three, uh, through centralized payments. Once you've set up that hierarchy, you then need to assign a purpose to it. In the list of purposes, there's a purpose called centralized payments. Once you set that purpose up for this hierarchy, you can now use centralized payments to collect payments. The next setup that is done for centralized payments is in the general ledger module. Under general ledger, intercompany accounting, you must define the relationships for discounts and exchange rates between each of the centralized payments companies. In this case, for CEEI, any posted cash discounts will be posted in the legal entity of the invoice. The exchange rate gains and loss will be posted in the legal entity of the payment. As you can see for CEU, both cash discounts and currency exchange rates will be posted in the legal entity of the invoice. The last setup that you want to do is affects all customers. To make centralized payments work, customers must be connected through the global address book between each legal entity. Let's take a look at the global address book and see how a customer is linked between many legal entities. I go to home and in the common area I go to global address book. As you can see we have a number of organizations and people in the address book. Let's take a look at one called Lion Concert Hall. Lion Concert Hall is a party, and on the right-hand side of the Global Address Book list page, you can see the different roles and relationships that that customer has. Notice that in the company CEE, Lion is, the account, is account number 2101. Also in company CEU, Lion is also 2101. This relationship, by having them as a customer in both CEE and CEU, finishes the connection between the two companies and allows you to do centralized payments with that customer. Now let's do some centralized payments for Lion Concert Hall. First, let's take a look at the transactions that Lion has in the CEE company. We'll look at transactions and notice that in the CEE company we have a customer invoice for a thousand dollars and we have a customer payment for five hundred dollars. Now let's go into CEU and do some centralized payments. Again let's take a look at Lion Concert Hall and let's take a look at the transactions that they have in CEU. Notice at the open transactions there's two older invoices and then there's a third invoice for $500. Now let's assume we received a payment for $990 we'd like to apply it against the appropriate invoice. There are three ways to apply centralized payments. One is through a payment journal, the other is through the inter-customer payments form, and finally you can just settle open transactions against each other. Let's go ahead and go into a payment journal. We'll create a new payment journal, and we'll go in using lines. The default here is the current company that we're in, which is CEU, and let's enter the account number for Lion Concert Hall. In this case, we can actually search for a single invoice first. Notice that when we open up this form, we see all the invoices for CEU. I don't see any kind of an invoice for around $990. So with centralized payments, we also have the option of clicking a tab called All Companies. This brings together all the invoices and payments from other companies 
into a single form. Notice now that we have three invoices for CEU, but we have another one here for CEE for a thousand dollars. And it has a ten dollar discount, so this could be the one that we want to get. We bring that in and it applies the a ten dollar discount that was on the account. Notice how the invoice was brought in. The discount was calculated and we have a credit for nine hundred ninety. This appears to be the invoice that we want and we were able to find it very quickly. Now if we're not exactly sure which invoice it is, we can also simply enter the amount as a credit and go into the function settlement form. Notice that in the functions settlement form, all the invoices across all the companies are listed. You'll see three CEU invoices and payments and you'll see two CEE invoices and payments. Here we can also mark the, the thousand dollar invoice. Notice that the amount to settle is 990 because that's exactly what uh, the calculation of the discount came up with. We can close the form and it creates the cash receipt journal just like we did before. Now let's do the same payment but let's do it through the enter customer payments form. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this so that it's available for us in the enter customer payments form. So from our journal instead of using lines let's use enter customer payments. And let's go ahead and type in 2101 that's Lion Concert Hall. And notice again that our list of all the invoices and payments for all the companies are shown in the enter customer payment form. We'll enter our $990 payment and then we can see that our thousand down here it represents that invoice. We mark it. It calculates the $10 discount and we can simply save it in the journal. Now we go back to the cash receipts journal, go to lines, and we'll see again the same invoice and payment matched together and settled in the payment journal. Now let's take a look at the settle open transactions form and show you how you can simply settle different invoices and payments against each other without going through a payment journal. So again we're on Lion Concert Hall but this time we're going to use the settle open transactions form. Notice that in this form all the payments and all the invoices for the CEU and the CEE company are there. Notice also in red that the thousand dollar payment has been marked uh, but not settled yet. In this case we can look and we see that we have a five hundred dollar invoice in CEU and a five hundred dollar credit in CEE. If we mark the payment of five hundred dollars, mark it as the default payment, and then we can apply it against the $500 invoice. Notice that the $500 invoice has a discount available so that the payment will be too much. We can make a decision here. We can say go ahead and accept that payment overage or we can go ahead and say we don't need to apply that discount at all. That's where normal always and never happens. Normal calculates the discount based on your accounts receivable parameters. Always means always take the discount never means never take a discount. So you'll notice now that the amount to settle instead of 495 is $500. So in this case I'm going to not take the discount so that a payment matches the invoice. I can go ahead then now and, and update the settle transactions and those two transactions will be settled against each other. Again we did that across CEE and CEU to do a centralized payments. That's all we have today for centralized payments. I hope this information was helpful to you.